kids got me this t-shirt for my birthday, so I just had to wear it. And I traded my 2011 Ford Fusion for this 2024 Toyota RAV4. Now that's a bit out of character for a guy like me. Like that 2011 Ford Fusion, uh, even though it had 13 years in it, uh, probably had another five. Like I tend to drive these things almost right into the ground. What kills them around here is the rust. It's a killer. And ultimately, like this new uh, 2024 RAV4, that's how it will die too, whether it's in my hands or somebody else's down the road. Uh, that will be the death of it. Rust is just awful. But what led me to bite the bullet here is that this 2024 RAV4 is uh, into its sixth year of that generation. It's a normally aspirated engine matched with an eight-speed conventional transmission. Like, that's where I come from, okay? That's my kind of thing. And uh, scuttlebutt is that uh, next year, uh, this thing will get a whole new uh, makeup. And uh, I thought I'd pick one up right now while they're still available. So it's not perfect, right? Like, nothing is. So they went and put GDI in here, like gasoline direct injection. Wish they had not done that, okay? But uh, at the very least, they also added port uh, fuel injection. So uh, it can help wash the intake valves, uh, which is a problem with GDI. But overall, like uh, it's too bad they did that. It's an extra cost. Uh, you've got high pressure pump that you really wouldn't need here. You've got uh, direct injectors that are usually a little harder to reach uh, it, for the little gain. It's, it's too bad they do that. Another thing I could have done without is this auto stop, auto start feature, right? So when you come up to stop signs or red traffic lights, the engine will kill. And then when you release the brake, it'll start again. Uh, you can cancel that feature by pressing this button. You have to do it each and every time you start the car. It's a pain in the ass. So I wish that they didn't have that feature at all, or at the very least that the default would be that the feature is off. And for those people that are inclined and want to save the planet, they can then press the button and put that feature on. But I am very much liking Android Auto. Very nice. So I'm going to get to the real point of this video very soon. But it certainly isn't about uh, trying to boast that the fit and finish of this vehicle is ahead of some others. Like if you went out and you uh, argued um, that some other models and some other manufacturers uh, had better screen integration or, um, you know, everything was a little bit more spit and polished and finished nicer, you probably wouldn't get too much of an argument from me on that. So this is the XLE trim. Uh, it's not the XLE premium trim, which is an additional 2000 bucks. And that would give you imitation leather seats. This is cloth. I prefer cloth. Something else that that $2,000 premium trim would have given me is 19 inch rims versus the 17. And it would have been lower profile tires. I prefer the higher profile. Our roads are pretty rough up here. Okay? I'd rather have more rubber. And when I need to replace tires, 17 inch tires are less expensive than 19 inch ones. Also up here, you very much need winter tires. So with the $2,000 of that premium package that I saved, I can instead buy four 17 inch rims, four 17 inch winter tires, and Bob's your uncle. And it gets even better. TPMS is not mandated here in Canada, and Toyota chose not to implement the tire pressure sensors on this RAV4. So when I do these winter tire changes and going back to summer tires, I don't have to deal with these stupid TPMS sensors. And having higher profile tires makes it that much easier at a glance to see if there's some kind of an issue with your tire pressure. There's no V6 engine available for this RAV4. Just as well, transverse mounted V6 engines have one bank nestled right up against the firewall. 
Now, if you're a DIYer or even if you're a mechanic, yeah, you much appreciate having an inline four if it's transverse mounted like this, where your coils and your plugs are all available and your fuel injectors, at least these port injection ones, it's so much easier to work on. And there's 200 horses here. That's more than enough to keep up with the traffic. These are public roads after all, uh, not a racetrack. So, uh, and you know, I thought I would take a hit on the um, fuel mileage I was getting with that Ford Fusion, like it was exceptional. Um, I'm not, this is right in line. Like this, this thing will get around 45 miles to the Imperial gallon, like really nice. And look at the room. And now we're getting to what inspired me to make this video in the first place. Now have a look at the location of the ABS module. The bulk connector is easily accessible. If this unit had to be replaced, I mean, it's sitting right here. And often you'll find ABS modules not only hard to reach, but they're kind of uh, put down low in the vehicle and they're uh, kind of exposed to road salt and uh, a real mess. And uh, you'll have a hard time with the screws. They're going to be all um, rusted out. You know, the ones that bolt on the hydraulic unit to the electrical control unit. Having it sit here is so nice. Same with the alternator, like really well located if you needed to replace it. And right here is the connector for easy diag. And the ECM, well, it sits right up here. And the bulk connectors are easily accessible. It's also not sitting underneath the wiper cowl where it would be susceptible to water intrusion. It's not behind a fender liner where it's also vulnerable there and hard to reach. It's sitting pretty right here. Now, why can't all manufacturers do that? So that, that's what inspired me to do the video in the first place. Not so much to brag about my new vehicle, although I really do like it. Uh, when we were shopping for this, I wanted black. She wanted blue. Uh, we compromised, we got black. Take care, guys.